Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman, for holding this hearing today. Thank you to each of our witnesses for being here today. General aviation is a key part of Arizona's aviation economy, supporting nearly 19,000 jobs and contributing $3.3 billion in economic activity just in 2019. And in Arizona, we have three of the top 10 busiest general aviation airports in the country. So ensuring continued support for and growth of general aviation must be a top priority for FAA reauthorization. Today, I wanna to focus on the Contract Tower Program, which is one of the FAA's most successful government industry partnership and serves the general avi aviation community. In Arizona, we have seven contract towers, including Phoenix Mesa Gateway, the busiest contract tower in the country in terms of traffic. This important air safety traffic safety program maintains and develops general aviation activity and supports DOD flight training operations and military readiness, as well as the pilot flight schools all across the country. And it's also important to note that contract towers account for approximately one third of all tower operations in the nation and about 70% of contract controllers are veterans. Mr. Kreider, what benefits does the contract tower program provide to the national airspace system especially for the general aviation community? Well, I think it's a tremendous uh, success story. Uh, it's been um, uh, proven many times that the safety record is uh, on par with the FAA towers. Uh, it really serves as an entry point for airports that are reached that point of uh, operations where they need a tower. So it's a great uh, entry point for uh, ATC uh, activities. Uh, we talked before about uh, some of the workforce issues, but I think uh, a renewed focus on uh, reconstruction, rebuilding, refurbishing the towers that are in place, uh, the workforce itself, as we talked about, but also the, the real-time equipment that the controllers need to integrate into a national <laughs> airspace system, uh, make sure they have the situational awareness and the equipment that uh, facilitates that safe transition. And you mentioned workforce. I know uh, my colleague, Congressman Brownlee, had a question about workforce earlier. Staffing shortages continue to be a major challenge throughout the industry, including at Phoenix Mesa Gateway Airport. We recently opened a brand new $30 million air traffic control tower at Phoenix Mesa Gateway, but staffing shortages have reduced operations at the tower by four hours each day because, of con because contract employees have unfortunately left, uh, with, often with only a few weeks notice to go work for the FAA instead. These positions cannot easily be filled as it often takes six months to train a new controller and that leaves airports like Phoenix Mesa Gateway with difficult operational decisions in order to adjust. I won't ask a question about it because you already talked about uh, workforce issues, but Mr. Kreider, on, on a different note, your written testimony highlights the important role that general aviation sector will play in the deployment of advanced air mobility. Can you elaborate on general aviation airports potential infrastructure needs to help accommodate this new technology? Absolutely, uh, you know, I think that what we're seeing, whether it's uh, the EV tolls or uh, the, you know, some of the other uh, emerging technologies, though that R&D is done at GE airports. You know, typically it's uh, for reasons of operations or uh, available land or for whatever reason. So I think GE airports will continue to play a really important role in uh, where those vehicles are built, uh, where they're tested and, and proven. Um, and ultimately, I think they, they uh, provide a, a new dimension for underserved markets, uh, for region air, regional air mobility, for last mile, if you will, or connectivity to the hub and spoke system. So I think uh, this, this entire discussion of advanced air mobility is truly ripe for the GA airport community and, and communities that are served by uh, GA airports. My last question is for Mr. Castagna. What key elements should the FAA consider as it develops the necessary certification and operating standards for AAM? Thank you, Congressman, great question. I think that there's a extreme nexus between the current 135 operators that exist today and those regulatory processes um, and the AAM community where it's a natural segue where we believe that, that that industry is going to rely on that same type of regulatory platform our organization's prepared to, and we've already established a committee to meet with the AAM and the, and the Vertiport community to see how we can integrate those activities into our regulatory process to advocate for those. And as well, in, in to tap onto what Mr. Kreider said, the infrastructure required at airports, um, it, it requires the streamlining of building codes and other types of coordination where you will be able to provide the necessary power grid to support those uh, activities. 
appreciate your answers. I yield back. Thank you, Mr.